After receiving report from your evaluator, determine the urgency of the situation. If appropriate, take some time to wash your hands and review the chart. Be sure to go over the chief complaint, history, allergies, recent vital signs, orders, medications, and labs. Be sure to compare the MAR with the provider's orders. Sometimes things are not appropriately transferred between sheets when one area is updated. And if needed, take a look over your medications in the drug reference book. Next, take some time to gather your supplies. You will want to gather the supplies necessary to perform an indwelling catheterization on a female patient and a straight catheterization with urine sample on a male patient. Ensure that all supplies you have gathered are not expired and double check the packing to make sure that it's not torn. You are now ready to enter the patient's room. When you first enter the room, wash your hands and introduce yourself to the patient. Make sure that you identify the patient using two identifiers and assess for allergies before performing any assessments or procedures. You can raise the bed to an appropriate height while doing this if you wish. Once you have identified that you have the correct patient, you can assess the patient's knowledge of the purpose for the catheterization and procedure to place it. Listen to the patient to identify knowledge gaps, then tailor your explanation to specifically address what she doesn't know. Plan on talking about the pre-procedural assessments, positioning for the placement, and the insertion procedure. Before beginning the assessment, be sure to provide privacy by closing the patient's door or pulling the baize curtain. If you haven't already, raise the bed to an appropriate working height. Then wash your hands and begin your assessment. Ask the patient about recent urine activity. Have they urinated recently? Any difficulty or pain? And do they feel like they need to go to the bathroom right now? Ask these questions to help avoid an unnecessary catheterization. You may then apply clean gloves and begin a lower abdominal assessment while the patient is supine. Try to keep the patient as covered as possible at all times. This helps provide privacy and keep the patient warm. Visualize, percuss, and palpate the suprapubic region. At this point, what we do is determined by whether we are dealing with a female or male patient and if we're doing an indwelling or straight catheterization. We will start with the female indwelling catheterization. For female indwelling catheterization, begin by putting the patient in a dorsal recumbent position for perineal assessment and catheter insertion. Starting the patient in a supine position, bend their knees and abduct them to the sides while the patient relaxes. Avoid excessive abduction on the patients with bad hips and consider supporting the legs with pillows as needed. You should now place a waterproof pad under the patient and be sure to continue to cover the patient as much as possible. Remember, we are trying to visualize the perineum, so ensure that the patient's upper body is covered and cover the lower body only as allowed. And if needed, adjust your light source to illuminate the perineal area. Inspect the perineum for erythema, drainage, and odor. The pen light to visualize as needed. Use soap and water on a washcloth to remove gross debris as needed and ensure that you wipe anteriorly to posteriorly to avoid moving contents from the rectum into the vagina or the urethra. In the process of moving the patient's legs and inspecting the perineum, you will determine if you might need help with the catheterization. An extra person can be needed if the patient is unable to cooperate, such as a patient with dementia, or if extra hands are needed to separate leg, groin, or labial tissue with larger patients. When you are done, remove your gloves and wash your hands. Before beginning the parts of the procedure requiring sterile technique, it is important to remove clothing or objects that could encourage contamination. If you haven't already, remove hanging objects, garments with loose long sleeves, and watches. Be advised that if you wear large rings, they can tear gloves. Now open the outside plastic packaging of your Foley kit. Place the kit either on your bedside table or at the foot of your patient's bed before opening. This video demonstrates using the bed. In the field, you can consider using your bag as a waste container at the foot of the bed. Save the bag during practice to repack your kit. Using aseptic technique, open your kit by peeling back each corner of the drape. Open the first drape corner away from you, then the sides, and finally pull the last corner towards yourself. This is done to prevent reaching over the kit when your sterile supplies are exposed. We are now going to remove the square sterile drape from the kit. This can be done in two different ways. The first way is shown in the video. With clean hands, carefully grab the drape by the folded edge and lift upwards. Separate the drape by only touching the edges. 
then you may place the drape shiny side down under the patient's buttocks. Alternatively, you may apply sterile gloves that you brought separately from the kit, take and open the drape while wearing the gloves, and then place the drape under the patient's buttocks while carefully preventing contamination of your gloves by touching the center of the drape. If you placed the square drape with clean hands, you should now apply your sterile gloves, either from the kit or from separate packaging. Be sure not to turn your back on the sterile products and the drape. Follow proper technique while donning your gloves. With sterile gloves, you may now grab the fenestrated drape, which is the drape with a diamond-shaped hole in the middle. Carefully place this drape over the patient's perineum, exposing the perineal area. And do not contaminate your gloves by touching the patient or the bedding directly. You may now organize the rest of your supplies in your kit. Be sure to do the following things before attempting insertion. You should have a syringe of sterile water, a package of lubricant, a package of betadine, and some form of cotton swabs inside this kit along with a Foley catheter. The seal between the catheter and the drainage bag should be checked to ensure that it is not broken and the bag's emptying valve should be closed. Remove the plastic sheath of the catheter, then take the lubricant package and empty the lube onto your sterile tray. Take the syringe of sterile water and connect it to the balloon port of the catheter. During actual catheter insertion, you will want to open your betadine package and saturate your cotton swabs. Some kits will pack swab sticks into the betadine packaging, in which case you just need to open it. During the performance test, we want to avoid applying betadine to the mannequin, so you may leave your betadine package untouched. Your evaluator will slide a package of sterile saline swab sticks into your kit at this time to replace the betadine. Simply open the package of swab sticks so that they can be easily grabbed later. Next, you will lubricate the catheter. In the field, simply grasp your catheter and lift it out of the box. Run the first few inches of the catheter through your lube in the tray. Practicing and the performance test, we want to avoid using the kit's lube. At this point, your evaluator will offer you a bottle of mannequin lube. Simply dip your catheter into the bottle to lubricate your catheter instead. Double check that you have prepared appropriately and then inform your patient that you are going to prep her perineum. Using your non-dominant hand, spread the labia to fully expose the patient's urethra. This action contaminates your non-dominant hand. You may not touch any sterile contents with this hand without contaminating them. Be sure to keep your catheter tip away from your non-dominant hand. Ready to prep the labia using your saline swab sticks. Remember that this would be betadine in real life. Using three total swab sticks, wipe from top to bottom on the labia. The first swipe should cover one side of the labia. The second stick should wipe the opposite side. The third stick should work down the center of the labia and cover the urethra and the exterior portion of the vagina in betadine. Do not lose grip of the labia with your non-dominant hand at this point. This would contaminate your prep and require you to reprep the perineum. You should now pick up the catheter and prepare to insert. Ask the patient to bear down gently as if voiding. Be aware of the entirety of your catheter as you manipulate it. Do not let it become contaminated by touching the edges of the drapes of the patient's legs or yourself. Dip the catheter into the patient's urethra and advance it forward. If the catheter touches any non-sterile area, including your non-dominant hand, stop, remove the catheter, and prepare to start over with a new catheter. Advance the catheter until you see urine flow return which typically occurs after three inches of the catheter have been inserted in a female. Do not force the catheter if significant resistance is felt on real patients. Insert the catheter another one to two inches after urine return. Then inflate the balloon by instilling the port with your sterile water syringe. You may remove your non-dominant hand from the labia at this time to inflate the balloon while stabilizing the catheter with your inserting hand. Once inflated, you may lightly pull on the catheter to ensure that the balloon is preventing the catheter from falling out. Lift the drainage bag up and off of the side of the bed. Ensure that there are no dependent loops in the tubing and that the bag is hooked on a non-moving place at the foot of the bed. The beds in the skills lab only have a hook at the center of the bed side. You may use these for test off in practice, but do not use them in real situations. You should then secure the catheter to the patient's thigh using a stat lock or strap securement device. If you use an adhesive-based securement device, ensure that you apply protectant to the skin first. You may use an alcohol wipe or protectant packaging to simulate during the test-off. 
Ensure that there is enough slack in the line to prevent constant tension, but not too much that it could cause the catheter to excessively move in and out of the perineum. Consider the patient's range of motion and thigh size. You will likely need to place the securement device on the patient's inner thighs for the mannequin, but for real patients, you want to position the securement device as anteriorly as possible. At this point, you may clean the perineal area as needed, then dispose of your supplies, removing your gloves, washing your hands, and helping the patient to a comfortable position that provides privacy and warmth. Remember not to throw away your supplies when practicing. Remove the catheter first to remove your drape without ripping it. You will then get a fresh kit for your test off. Also be sure to verbalize that you would check your collection bag to ensure that the urine is flowing. At this point, your evaluator will help you reset the mannequin for a male straight catheter insertion with urine specimen collection. When your evaluator waiter tells you that the mannequin is ready, begin by putting your male patient into the correct position for perineal assessment and catheter insertion. We want male patients to lay in a supine position with the legs slightly separated. Take this time to place a chucks underneath the patient. And while positioning, ensure that the patient's privacy and warmth is retained as much as possible. You can cover the upper body and most of the lower body legs fairly easily for male patients. If needed, Adjust your lighting to give you good visualization of the penis. Inspect the perineum and penis for erythema, drainage, and odor. Perform pericare as needed with soap and water. And just like in previous insertions, this is when you would determine if you would need additional assistance in inserting the catheter. Verbalize your rationale to your evaluator. But you may remove your gloves and wash your hands. With clean hands, open the straight catheter kit towards you or toward the side. Ensure that you do not cross over the exposed contents with your arms. Using aseptic technique, place the sterile square drapes that it is under the penis. In the video, sterile gloves were applied first and the drape was placed without the gloves touching the patient or bedding. You may also grab the drape by its edges with clean hands and place it down carefully. If you haven't applied sterile gloves, do so before grabbing the fenestrated drape. Place the drape so that the center hole exposes the penis. You should now organize the equipment in your tray. First, remove the specimen container lid and set it on the table face side up. Set the specimen cup upright in the tray. In real life, you would use the betadine swab sticks included in the kit to prep the penis, but your evaluator will be replacing these with saline swab sticks to protect the mannequin. Open the packet of saline swab sticks and set it against the inner side of the kit. In real life, you would also open the sterile lubricant packet and either apply it directly to the catheter or empty it into the kit basin to run your catheter through it. You should now move the kit closer to the penis. You can do this by placing your hands inside the tray and pushing on the sides of the basin when lifting upward. Your evaluator will now offer the real mannequin lube that you're going to use to replace this action for the test. Once you have double checked that you and your patient are ready, use your non-dominant hand to grab the penis. Verbalize that you would retract the foreskin of your patient if they were not circumcised. Pick up one of the sterile swab sticks with your dominant hand and cleanse the penis by swabbing it in concentric circles outward from the urethra towards the base of the glands. Repeat this motion two more times using the remaining swab sticks. You may use your dominant hand to pick up the catheter. Ensure that the distal end is directed into the basin. In real life, you would want to lift the penis upward with light traction so that it is perpendicular to the body with your non-dominant hand. On the mannequin, this technique will actually kink the urethral passage, making it difficult to pass the catheter through the penis. So simply verbalize what you would do in real life. You are then going to ask the patient to bear down as if to void or take a deep breath. And insert the catheter slowly and continue advancing until you see urine return. This usually occurs after around seven inches of insertion. Withdraw the catheter if you feel resistance on a real human. Once you see urine, you can lower the penis and then hold the catheter with your non-dominant hand. Collect 20 to 30 milliliters of urine into the specimen container and then set it to the side on the bedside table. Empty the remaining urine in the bladder into the basin. Keep the catheter in until the urine stops flowing. Warn the patient and slowly withdraw the catheter and dispose of it by placing it in the trash or the kit bag. Then remove the catheter tray after examining how much urine is in it. Some workplaces will require you to empty the urine into a more accurate measuring device before emptying it into the toilet. 
you may then remove your gloves and wash your hands. Place your gloves if needed, then place your cap on the specimen container. If appropriate at the time, label it with all policy required information. Be sure to do the following before leaving the room. Clean up the patient with soap and water as needed and dispose of any additional supplies and reposition the patient so that they are comfortable. Thank the patient and ask if they need anything else. Make sure to then lower the bed, raise the upper guardrails, and give the patient their call light. You may then go to the med room for a debrief. At this point, you would discuss with your evaluator what you would document on. You would start with your assessments, and then also the type and size of catheter inserted with the amount of fluid that was used to inflate the balloon. This is useful for anyone attempting to remove the indwelling catheter. You then want to note any characteristics in the amount of urine that was obtained through the specimen collection. You'd also want to document your patient's response to the procedure and then any education that you gave them during it.